I'm going to go through the advanced Excel functions worksheet, um, the second one, um, which basically has VLOOKUPs, nested ifs, and text functions. So let's start with the first question over here. We want to use a VLOOKUP in column B to find the name of the manager based on the division. Um, so there is the division, so east, west, east, north, and so on. And then there is a managers tab, and it tells us which uh, manager is in charge of which area. So let's go over here and let's go through it. So we're going to use a VLOOKUP, so equals VLOOKUP. And remembering the first uh, parameter, the first thing that we need to give it is what are we looking up? We're looking up what division we have. And then I'll put a comma. Then I must refer to the table that has all the data, <coughs> that is the summary of all the data. So over here we've got the division and the manager. In the manager tab, I'm going to select the table, making sure that the data that we're looking for is always in the left hand most column. And there we go. Uh, remember also do not select the headings. And also it's a good idea right now to press F4 so that we have absolute cell referencing. Because the moment you copy down, you don't want this table moving down bit by bit when we copy the formulas down. And while we are in here, I'm not going to go back to the managers or to the data tab, uh, tab um, or worksheet. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to click over there and put a comma. Because the only thing I need to do next is put down which column we want to get the data from. So we want, or which column do you want to display data from? And that is obviously from the manager side over here, which is the second column. This is column one, this is column two. So we, we're going to put column two here. And then just close the brackets and hopefully it'll work. There we go. Let's just double check. East is Jack Smith. That is correct. So if we copy that down, that should be correct for all of them. Okay, now for question two, we need to add a suitable function in column D to tell me how many digits are in the employee code. So over there, how many digits are in there? So we're counting how many digits. So we are going to use find out the length of that cell. So we're going to use the len function. We're going to open brackets and we're just going to put what we're looking for the length of. So we're looking for the length of C5, how many digits or characters are in that cell. And there we go. It says 6. Now it says 6 Rand. I don't know why it says 6 Rand. I think it might be formatted to currency. Looks like it is. I'm just going to make it general. Now if it's back. And there are 6 characters in there. If I copy that down, looks like they all got 6 characters. Now let's look at question number 3. We need to add a nested if statement in column F over there to determine the sales status. And they basically tell us that if there are 200 or less sales, then there's a bronze status. Um, if it's between 201 and 500, it's silver. And if it's greater than 500, then it's gold. Now, as I've said before in previous videos, when we do a nested if, it's very easy to do this type of condition, which is less than or equal to 200, and very easy to do this condition where it's greater than 500. But to do between 201 and 500, it's not impossible, but it is quite challenging. So to make our life easier, and let's not do things too difficult here. Let's try the easier way. So I'm going to do it slightly different. I'm going to first check using the if statement if the number of sales is greater than 500. Now, does it include 500? No, it's only for sales 500 and above. Okay, so it says 500 and above. So it does actually include it. So I'm assuming that the sales from that to that does not include 500. So sales of 500 and above are classified as gold. So if that is true, we put a comma, and then we must write down what must happen. If it is true, then we must state the word gold. And remember, we put these in double quotes because I wanted to state it just like it is there. If it's not gold, then I can put in my second if statement over here because we've got three possibilities, not two. So remember, it's a nested if. So my second condition for my for, for this if statement, uh, as I said, I don't like to do the between 201 and 500. I'm going to do where the sales, always remember to select, you need to tell it where it must find this information. If that is less than equal to 200, because it says 200 sales or less, if that is true, then it must say the word 
runs. And if it's neither gold nor bronze, not a full stop, sorry, comma, it's neither bronze nor silver, then we must put in, on bronze or gold, then we must put in the word silver. So just remind yourself, it looks at that truth, that's or condition over there. If it's true, it will do the gold. If it's false, it will then only go to the second if statement. And that is why I know that if it's less than 200, it will say bronze. If it's any other possibility, it's not greater than 500, it's not less than 200, so it must be there for in between. It will then display silver. I've put one bracket in to close that little one there. You see it's color-coded it nicely for me, but there's still another one over there, so I must put in another bracket. And then enter, and it should work. And for some reason, this this example, the cell doesn't want to show the answer. It's not your fault if you got that answer. You, it is correct. It's just there's something wrong with this um, particular cell, which is allowing text. Maybe we should make it general. I don't know if that's going to change anything. But it looks like it's only it's, it's something wrong with that particular cell. But if you got that, you know it's right, even though it doesn't look right. Hopefully, in an exam, it won't be like that. Question four is also a nested if, um, so we get to practice again. Hopefully it's not going to give us something like this where it's not showing the actual answer, even though that is technically correct. Um, let's go to the classification. Again, very similar example. There are three options. It's either five or less for junior. It's either six to twelve for senior or twelve and or thirteen and above for long serving. Or for me, it would just be serving because I missed a long. But it's, it's okay. It's just long serving for this. So we're going to go equals if, open brackets. So we look at the years worked. So that's where I'm looking. So if the years worked is less than equal, not less than plus, less than equal to five, because it's five years or less, so it includes the five. That's why we have the equal. Then we must display the word junior. If it's false, then we're going to put the second if statement in. And this if statement, we're going to say if the years worked, remember to always select where you're getting the information from. If the years work is greater than equal to 13, then it must be long serving. And if it's neither long serving or junior, then it must be the option where it's between which is senior. Remembering all of these, because we want them to display the text like it is, we must put it in double quotes. And then I've got my closing brackets for the for the inside or the inner if statement. And then for the outer if statement, I'm going to put the second closing brackets. And there we go. Oh, thank goodness. This one works. Seven. Yes, that is correct. You can scroll that down and we should have all the answers then. Only two more questions to go. Number five, we need to use a VLOOKUP, or as I called it before, a FLOOKUP, because it sounds cooler, um, in column J to work out the bonus. And the bonus is based on the years worked. And we've got to take that number, like for example, number seven, and we've got to go look up the table in column H, or well, that's where we find the years worked, and look in the bonus worksheet. If I go down here to the bonus worksheet, there we go. So I would look for the number seven, years worked, and I would display 900 Rand as the bonus. So let's have a look and see how we're going to do that. We're going to put in VLOOKUP. So I'll put an equals VLOOKUP. Okay, the first criteria or the first parameter is what are we looking up? Are we looking up this year's worked? Please take note and reminder, some, sometimes you guys select the entire row. That's not necessary. We're only looking for this particular person. Um, so we only need this particular cell. When we copy down, it will apply to the other cells. So H5, where are, where's the table with all this information? We go down to the bonus worksheet. There's the table. Remember to select everything except the headings and make sure that the data that you are looking up, so I'm going to go down here to the bottom, make sure the data, so the years that we're looking up, the years worked, is in the far left hand side of the table, which it is. And while I've got it here, I'm going to select F4 so that I can put that in um, in bracket or in the, the absolute cell referencing so that when I copy the formula down it doesn't shift the table down and I come back over here and make sure that's F4 
sometimes depending if on if you haven't deselected the table or if you select the table if you press F4 it might do both of them sometimes it only does one depending on certain things so that's my second criteria is the table array now I need to say which column am I using if you've come to the situation and you've accidentally come to this uh, worksheet and you need to go look at the other worksheet if I go back to bonus you'll notice bonus comes up there you actually don't need it I can actually just delete that part and I can just put down the number of the column so we want the bonus over here in the third column because this is column one this is column two we want the data from column three so that's why I'll put a three down and there we go so what we're looking for that's h5 on the main worksheet in data then we come to the bonus worksheet for a2 to c31 using absolute cell referencing so that makes sure that when we copy the formula down it doesn't change and then we put a 3 because we want column 3's data so let's press enter at this point to see if it works there we go it does say 900 rand and if I copy that down it should apply to all the other people the last and final question has to do with some string manipulation or text manipulation. We are asked to create a, a string or construct a string. Remember, there are two main types of questions they can ask with text. They can either ask you to create some sort of text, like a code, or they'll give you some um, text and you've got to extract certain parts from that text. This is an example of constructing it. We've got to construct that code and they tell us the rules. Okay, so we're going to say equals. Let's follow the rules. We want the first letter of the division. So the first letter of the division, well, that's, that's obviously copying it from the left. So we're going to say equals left. And from which cell are we getting the, the text from? We're getting it from A5. And how many letters are we copying? We just co Or how many characters? We just copy in one character. So that will give me my E. Now, when, when we have the E, I'm going to add on to that, which is concatenate. Or just to put text together to bind them together you can use that that little symbol it looks like a and it's called an ampersand and we refer to it as concatenating text in Excel so over here we're going to then add the last letter of the division so the last letter we're going to be copying from the right in that case so type in right and which text we copy from the division and only the first letter from the right so there's one letter so now it's ET then it's followed by a hash sign so then we're gonna use the and or ampersand or concatenate whichever you call it again and put in double quote the hash sign or as some of you might call it the hashtag and then we're gonna put an and on it again now this next bit we need to do digits 2 to 4 of the employee code so we're not so take the employee code I'm not starting from the beginning so I can't use left I'm not doing it from the back so I can't use right so I have to go from the middle so I'm gonna go mid which text from well it's the employee code starting at position 2 digit 2 now if you think about it I need digit 2 digit 3 and digit 4 so that's three digits because the next criteria is I need to say how many digits so I'm gonna say three and close the brackets watching carefully you see it's the left let's just see if it works that is the correct answer just have a look at the code again I take the left by itself and then I use the and or concatenate or ampersand then the right and then another and and then the hash and then another and and then the mid and then my string is done okay hope this video has been useful and hopefully it can help you with your test that's coming up